everybody, this is Charles Kelly, and welcome to The Lancha Life. Next up on our smoking agenda is the La Barba Purple. This is a very interesting cigar. I want to thank Tony Bellotto, uh, Dan, and Dave at Wooden, Wooden Indian Tobacco Shop where uh, I picked these up at a La Barba and Caldwell event. Barba Purple comes in uh, four Vitolas. Um, the one I'm smoking here today uh, is the Corona Gorda, which is a six and three quarter by 46 gauge. They also have a Robusto, I think that's a five by 50. They have a Gorda, which is a six by 60 and a Lancero that is a seven by 40. We're gonna switch and I'm gonna let you take a look at this cigar. I'm laughing because I was sneezing my ass off uh, while I was trying to give the description earlier. So I had to edit that out. Now this cigar has an interesting mix of tobacco. The Rapidorian is an Ecuadorian Habano. The binder is a Dominican Corojo, but the filler is where it gets interesting. It consists of a Corojo, a Dominican Habano Hueleta, Hueleta, or Huelta, Abajo Seco, say that fast three times, and a Carbonelli, most unique filler. Uh, combination I've ever seen. Like, I've never seen that filler combination. Take a look at this wrapper. It's very earthy, cocoa-y, a lot of veins, but it looks, it just looks rich. It doesn't look dull. It's got a nice little gleam uh, to it, uh, and, and, and it just looks wonderful. I don't, I don't know what that little dark patch up there by the cap is. Um, I just torched it up. Now, this isn't my first La Barba Purple. In fact, at the event, I smoked a La Barba Robusto, and also, I have in my humidor a La Barba Robusto initial production run. That would make this cigar, that cigar about two years old, because uh, I think the La Barba Purples came out in 2014. Uh, so that's a really old cigar. I've got that in the special box. Uh, I'm gonna let that sit there and grease up a little bit more before I go and start using it. Now, the profile is very interesting. I've seen the profile on the barber shop. I've seen it on. Uh, uh, another major online retailer shop and both of them a little differently are, are a little different but here's something that I, I can agree on it's got a really crazy floral note one that I can't pin pin down right now definitely got some cocoa and some sweetness so there's a cocoa a sweet and this really jazzy floral thing going on. Very unique, almost um, burning wheat, like a burning wheat, almost a cereal uh, complexion uh, or, 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 or a level of complexity. Medium body smoke. Here's the best descriptor of this cigar. It's interesting. And sometimes 
that's 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 good enough. It's not a bad cigar. It tastes good, but the thing I would say most about it is it's it's interesting, and I gotta say it's gotta be because of that combination of tobaccos. So I'm thinking that the HV, what is that? HVA Habano Welta Abajo Seco must be some type of micro regional tobacco. Um, but also having three different uh, different fillers is going to give a very unique, uh, a, a level of uniqueness that I haven't found before. I also haven't seen Carbonelli tobacco in anything, and I tried to do some quick research on all of those tobaccos before I went on the video, and uh, I couldn't find much about it. So uh, in future videos, you can look for me to do some more of that. Uh, La Barba uh, Cigars is the brainchild of Craig Rossi and Tony Bellato. I met Tony at the event. He lives in Ohio. Uh, he and I are going to try to get together when I make my Midwest book tour, which is going to be coming up here in a couple of months, uh, where I hope to get uh, a review with him on another one of his cigars. Uh, which has one of my favorite tobaccos, Pelo de Oro. So we'll talk to Tony about that. The tobacco is starting to heat up and the flavors are not so in your face. They're really beginning to develop nicely. There is a very, just this far in, again, I have to describe it as a velvety smoothness about this cigar. Uh, and again, the flavors are very unique. It still has that earthy, vegetal tone. I, it's, it almost reminds you of like, like I said, hay or wheat or dry grass, something burning. Uh, but, but you know, when those things burn, there's a sweetness to them, not a harshness like a, a wood smoker or, or something like that. Settling in, it's not beating me up on the retro, which is a, 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 a good thing. Uh, and uh, pretty good, pretty good. Not the best cigar I smoke, not in the top 10 cigar I smoke, maybe not in the top 20 that I've ever smoked, but a very good, unique flavored cigar that you don't mind keeping around. Be also, because it's not so harsh, it's something that uh, a person that's coming out of their introductory phase. You know, this would be a nice, solid, transitional cigar that doesn't taste like every other damn cigar you've ever smoked. And it's just hanging in there. I mean, nothing up front, nothing bruising. Um, just a nice, nice cigar that's uh, holding on there. So. As I said, for Vitolas, uh, Coco. Something burning, little sweetness. Uh, really good, good cigar. Take a look at it again while I go to my notes. Um, yeah, the, the, one of the things about the notes uh, is dried fruit, cinnamon. Uh, definitely get the toast. Um, but I'm, I'm not getting much cinnamon in terms of a, a, a spice profile. Um, driving through Philly, everybody's a little on edge. Uh, if you're watching this video, this is the day that we had the uh, guy drive into people in New York. I think he may have killed someone and injured a lot of people and they're trying to sift through whether that was a terrorist attack or not, even though the nitwit has a history 
of drunk driving and is in the custody of the police. So, you know, going through Center City, I'm looking at uh, Homeland Security, terrorist units, cats and combat gear, you know, kind of kind of stepping around and, and making their presence felt. We're still working our way down the cigar. It's starting to pick up in in body. Um, still a medium body, but it's a medium body now. Ash is a bit flaky. Uh, it's starting to have some problems there if you see that, but uh, the draw is good. Uh, even though I've seen a review on a different cigar by La Barber where there were some issues with the draw, this draw is perfect. Uh, I need something a little stiff on a Corona, Corona Gordo or Lancero to keep it from turning into a cigarette on me because if you get too much, a uh, too easy a draw, it'll take you five minutes to smoke it and all you're gonna be left with is uh, ash foam. I think for me, that's something I, I look for and like. It helps me control myself because sometimes I can't control myself with Lanceros and Corona Gordas. I think I'm gonna to have to start doing more in this Corona Gorda size. I love Lanceros, but but this is a really good size. I'm gonna get a, a warmer smoke because of how narrow the ring gauge is on this guy. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm digging this Corona Gorda. I, uh, don't have that many of them in the box, but I'm digging it. It looks like a, a Lancero on, 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 that's been that's been hitting the gym. I won't say it's a, a Lancero on steroids, but this is a Lancero that's been hitting the gym, a Corona Gorda. So, these are my initial thoughts. Eventually, I'm going to be writing about this at www.thelancerlife.com. But until I put this review out there, uh, I suggest you go out there and see the cigars and the whiskeys and cigar shops I have done reviews on. Uh, uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I also have a series that I'm done on different flavor profiles to help people, new smokers and old smokers, understand better what they're smoking and derive more pleasure from their cigar smoking experiences. How about that? I'm navigating my way through uh, this, this, this sea of traffic, but uh, I want to thank you for joining me. I am Charles Kelly. This has been The Lancer Life.